welcome to Tough Glove Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it! What's good, everybody? I'm locked in. Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. You see who we got on the screen. Yes, yesterday we had a pretty decent night of boxing. I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to the victors. I'm going to shout out Fabio Wardley. I'm going to shout out Dylan White, uh, Dylan White, Dillian White, excuse me. I'm going to give a shout out to Regis Prograde. Oh man, that was a fantastic fight. I really, really enjoyed the Progress fight uh, against Zapata. Man, it, it was a pretty war. Uh, Regis actually said that that was the hardest fight of his career. And I tend to believe him. I've never seen him look this touched up but we all know uh, Zapata's a beast he has power he has skill and uh, he made a good show of, of himself this was definitely a fight for the fans uh, nobody who loves boxing can't say that they didn't appreciate this fight now I regret not making my prediction video because I did predict that progress was going to pull off the victory however I thought it would be through a unanimous decision I thought that if anybody was going to do the knocking out it was going to be Zapata but that's not how it turned out. It was the complete opposite. And that's not to say I don't think Regis Progress has knockout power. I just, um, you know, with the, the fight matchup, I, I really didn't see it coming. But he caught him. He caught him. Shout outs to him. Louisiana, them dudes is built different. You understand? I always said, in my personal opinion, I always thought that Regis Progress was the best 140 pounder out there right now. You know, even above Josh Taylor, even though when he fought Josh Taylor, I don't know what happened in that fight, man. I, you know, I was looking at that fight. Regis, I don't feel he did everything he could to really win that fight. Right? I feel like Josh Taylor won that fight pretty convincingly. Uh, in fact, you know, he was taking advantage of all of the mistakes that Regis was making. He was getting them little sneaky hits in there. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Regis, once again, is a world champion. Congratulations, Louisiana. Stand up. Your boy came through with the win. And he's also calling out Josh Taylor for the remix. I mean, for the remix, for the rematch next year. I would love to see that rematch because I would favor Regis in that rematch. Now, I did find out not too long ago that um, Josh Taylor has a rematch coming up with Jack Catterall. That's going to be good as well. We may get into the fights that's coming up in a minute. Uh, I also want to talk about another fantastic fight. Oh man, it was drama. It was action. And I'm also now a fan of Fabio Wharton. Okay, I didn't really know too much about him. I know a little bit about him. The boy's a beast. You understand? You look at his knockout record, you know that he ain't nothing to sneeze at. Right? I think he's like in the 90%. Like, he only has one fight, but he has a, yeah, he's 93% knockout ratio. And so, he's, he's nothing to play with. Okay? Uh, for some reason, um, a lot of people didn't feel like he was going to win this fight. And I really wasn't sure. You know, one way or the other. But they said that he has no real amateur background. You understand? So, um, that's probably why they saw him as the underdog. But I will tell you, what made me a fan of Wardley is because he was getting caught. Okay? He was getting hit with shots. And I'm not going to say he shouldn't have got hit with them. Because um, Gorman was setting them shots up perfectly. Gorman can fight now. Okay? Gorman can fight. And he was boxing the shit. Nathan Gorman, he was boxing the hell out of um, Fabio Wardley. But what I loved about Fabio is he got hurt. And instead of retreating or folding, right, or fading, he had actually another gear that you saw him tap into, right? And when he stepped up that gear, okay, he let that dog come out of him. It was a wrap. It was entertaining how he made a comeback. It was a great comeback victory knockout. And so that led me to believe I know what fight I want to see Wardley in. Now, I don't know if it's going to be next or if it should even be next. I would love to see Fabio Wardley face Jared Anderson. Huh? Who y'all got for that fight? Think about that. Fabio Wardley versus Jared Anderson. Does that not sound like a future uh, super fight? If these guys continue on the path that they are, Oh, man, that's going to be an epic battle. I would love to see that fight, right? Dillian White, 
Um, he had a good showing of himself. You know, um, he actually showed another level. He did box a little more than he usually does. He looked a little cleaner. Um, I'm not the biggest Dillian White fan. I'm not even gonna lie to you. You know, I'm a, I, you know, I don't like how he was coming at my man Deontay Wilder. You know, not my man, pause. But you know, uh, one of my favorite fighters, Deontay Wilder, uh, last year calling him a bum and all of this nonsense and everything like that. So I would like to see Deontay Wilder and Deon and uh, Dillian White fight. I always wanted to see that fight just so Deontay Wilder could shut him up. I'm not interested in seeing the Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua remit. I mean rematch. He's already fought Tyson Fury. So I think the only place for Dillian White to go next would be to Deontay Wilder. I think that would be the fight that makes most sense for him. But, you know, I'm an American. You fans over there in Britain, let me know what y'all think about Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder. Get in the comment section, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. So we're going to talk about Regis Progress, right? Now... What I saw last night is a prime example why I always say I don't think Tiafimo Lopez is ready for these big dogs at 140. I don't think he's ready. You understand? Uh, it's going to be a long time before he gets into the upper level of 140 because a lot of people talk about Tiafimo Lopez like he's a superstar. He's not a superstar anymore. He moved up to 140. He didn't have a belt when he did it. Right? So it's not like he was able to go in and, and go straight into a championship match. He's not even fighting the top ranked guys in that division. So he's going to have to put on a little more before, um, you know, they start calling him a superstar. I know he beat Lomachenko, but, you know, that one victory is not going to just carry you your whole career. You're going to have to step it up. Okay? Um, I understand he needed a comeback fight to show us where he was. He looked good. He looked great. Now it's time for him to step it up in competition because if he don't want to fight Barbosa, I don't want to hear him say things like, well, who has Barbosa for? I don't want to hear that because if that's the case, that means you have to fight somebody that's ranked higher than Barbosa. If you do not, that means to me, you duck Barbosa. And I already feel like you ducked him anyway, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to show me what you can do in your next fight. I wouldn't even mind seeing Tiafimo Lopez versus Jose Zapata. Right? Zapata. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. But how about that fight? Right? Also, Regis Prograde called out Jose Ramirez, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? Because Ramirez is his mandatory. So now that we can get the unification bout, we will, he can skip the mandatory, but I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Ramirez. I like Ramirez, actually, as a fighter and as a person. So I want him to get his shine as much as possible. But yeah, so we had Regis Progrid, we had Dillian White, we had Fabio Worley, put on a great night of boxing for us, tough fights, um, entertaining fights. They, they had to dig deep, they had to show the dog that was in them, and they did that. The other thing I want to talk about is I saw a clip where Jamal Charlo, right? is talking to Bivol, and he's asking Bivol, yo, to Bivol's face, what's up with the fight? Let's meet at 168. Now, Bivol told him that he prefers to fight for belts, and I don't blame Bivol. Right now, his star is shining, right? Um, the, with the leverage that he has right now, he should be fighting for the titles, but right now, off the better be, you know, is the only route he can take. Even if he fights Jamar Charlo, he would still be able to fight for Undisputed at the um, light heavyweight because he wouldn't be fighting for his belts wouldn't be on the line at 168 in fact Jamar Charlo was telling him forget about the belts let's just do it for an attraction and I like that mindset I've been very hard on Jamar even though he's my favorite Charlo I've been very hard on him because he ain't been moving right right even if you look at box rec they got Jamar Charlo listed as inactive it's been over a year Right? Almost a year and a half since he's been in the ring. And they actually got him listed in box rec as inactive, as if he's retired or something. I would hate for that to be the case. But if he is going to come back, I'm going to be honest with you. Even at 168, right? I don't see him beating Bivol. Not because I don't think he has the skill or the power to challenge Bivol. It's just that you don't step into the ring with Bivol with ring loss. That's just not something that you do. That's not an intelligent move. I think you should get a few more fights, uh, fights under your belt first and then go for that bivvy fight, right? But I get it. I get it. And at this point, we got to, you know, 
Jamal Charlo is trying to make these fights, but a lot of fighters are avoiding him, right? We can't blame him for the people that don't want really to get in the ring, but we still need him to be out there in the forefront showing the people that he is looking to get these fights, and he's not going to let them discourage him in the passing up uh, opportunities to make his legacy great. Because right now, he's falling way behind Jamal Charlo, who to me is... Hands down, one of the best fighters in the world right now. One of the best fighters in the world. And I actually um, have a video that I'm putting together about specifically Jamel Charlo. So, y'all keep on the lookout for that. Anyway, let me know how you guys enjoyed the fight. What do you think Regis Progress' next move should be? Um, I know y'all also saw Javante Tank Davis on here. He's been going back and forth with Shakur Stevenson. I personally feel like... Uh, I want to see that fight. Everybody wants to see that fight. But with the back and forth, you know, these fights can be made to happen. And it looks like Tank has a, bitty, a pretty good schedule for next year, right? He got Hector Garcia. Then after Hector Garcia, allegedly, he has Ryan Garcia. But for some reason, if Ryan Garcia doesn't pull through, or if even if it does, he's victorious in that fight, assuming he gets past Hector Garcia and Ryan Garcia, maybe later in the year, we can see him face Devin Haney or Shakur Stevenson. Either one of those fights, I would love to see. All right, get in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. All right, I'm locked in. Tough Glove Boxing. Thank you for checking out the content. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'm out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.